<laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Sand Shark Bites. I'm your host, Justin Jarrett, Sports Information Director at USCB, and I'm joined by the dancing man of Beaufort, <laughs> James A. Duffy, professor extraordinaire, uh, actor, uh, apparently not as great of a dancer. <laughs> Not, I'm not a strong dancer, no. You, you can't be all things. You're a renaissance that's man, right, but you right. know you have to have some weaknesses. It's, it's just not fair to the other guys. It's really, <laughs> i got to rein it in. Um, yes, well, 9 to 5 is opening this weekend at the Center for the Arts. Uh, it'll be running through uh, next weekend from the 11th, 9th, 11th, 16th, 17th, 18th. Center for the Arts. There's your shameless plug. There's and, shameless uh, plug for today. And so now you know. Go see 9 to 5, see Duffy, and uh, that'll also explain any, any loopiness any with loopiness. the program today yes. that goes above and beyond the usual loopiness, which is usually pretty substantial. So, so let's get to it. Yeah, a lot, lot to recap this week. Um, not as much a lot that we'd like to excitedly talk about because the results weren't, weren't great this weekend. Uh, Sand Shark Soccer dropped a couple, lost 2 to nothing to Faulkner, and lost 3 to nothing to uh, Bernal, and, uh, and both games, uh, I say disappointing results because we felt like we uh, definitely outplayed Faulkner and, uh, and should have been in a much more competitive match with Bernal. Coaching staff was you know, disappointed in the way those turned out. Uh, outshot Faulkner 22-4, to four, um, had a couple of breakaways going the other way against the run of play, and um, Taylor Superior, bless her heart, is doing a great job in goal, but she's not a goalkeeper, and she's certainly not... Uh, ready for those one-on-one -on -one situations against a proven goal scorer, so it was tough for her in that match. Um, didn't have much of a chance on those goals. And then against Bernal, again, uh, I think 19 shots, so so the opportunities are there, just not finishing them off, and and uh, several of the players were in the office with the with the coaches this morning. They were talking about, you know, what going what's going wrong. They're looking at their, their instat program, breaking it down, saying we need to do this and that. So uh, they're working on, on sorting some things out, but man, there's a lot of talent there. And, and like Coach Ed said in, in the recap for the uh, Bernal game, well, we have the talent, we have the opportunity to be very competitive if we can start to, to give full effort and execute. So um, I'm still very excited about where we'll be when we get back in town here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's great. Uh, we're seeing again a lot of those two percenter goals that are hitting the frame um, and, and bouncing away like two, like the two years ago. Uh, it seemed like every other shot was uh, going into the lumber yard, right? Hitting yeah. The, hitting the wood, hitting the frame. Yeah, we had a couple of uh, and, uh, couple uh, pings in the uh, game against Bernal. Need to, need to straighten that shot up, put a little more curve on the ball, do a little catch the wind, something. But uh, yeah, well, well, it's better to get it out of our system now, uh, sort things out, and be ready for conference play because we have three more games in non-conference. They'll all be on the road, uh, going to Middle Georgia on Saturday, a couple trips to Columbia, coming up against uh, Columbia College and Columbia International, and then open conference play on September 22nd at Southeastern, and then we'll be back home on September 30th against St. Thomas, and that will be the finale of uh, Pediatric Cancer Awareness Month, which... Uh, that's the one really positive thing that came out th this weekend, I think, is um, we did have some, some nice crowds. We had a lot of enthusiasm for the pediat pediatric cancer awareness. Um, had Kona Ice from Bluffton out here on Saturday. They gave all their proceeds to Leo's Legacy, the charity that we're supporting uh, with that promotion. And, uh, and they sold a ton of, of a, uh, shaved ice because it was hot, hot, yeah. hot. Yeah. So um, hopefully that'll, you know, That'll be a positive thing that comes from this past weekend, even though the, the W's weren't there. Um, and we're going to continue that throughout the month. You can call Gina Montford, 208-8077. That's area code 843. Uh, if you'd like to order a special shirt. Those fight are, like a kid. Yeah, fight like, fight a, like kid a kid shirt. shirt. Uh, USCB goes gold for awareness. Um, those are $20, and the proceeds, again, will go to Leo's Legacy. And um, also, if you want to come to the game on September 30th, bring a new stuffed animal or board game, and you'll get free admission. So those are going to go to um, youngsters, youngsters, I feel like an old man saying that, uh, children man. at the uh, at area hospitals, uh, especially MUSC, um, the children's hospital up there where uh, a lot of can cancer patients there. So um, that's, a, that's a cause that I think is near and dear to just about everyone. Um, we've all known someone who, who fought that battle. So um, please do support it, and, and hopefully we can make a positive change in the world. Absolutely. No, so there's your down. positive yeah. spin on San <laughs> Shark Soccer. Uh, many, many great things ahead, I'm sure, um, but it, it was a rough one this weekend. Um, but we did have some, some great news this weekend. When, and, uh, when, you, when you need good news, where do you look? 
Just find Betsy Douglas. Betsy Douglas out in front by two and a half minutes over her next competitor, right? A phenomenal champion of character and a phenomenal runner. And like you said, two and a half minute win, um, not pushed at all. She, she ran a nice easy 1902, 1902 uh, in the 5K yeah. at the Palmetto Cross Country Festival, won the race easily. Um, she's going to have a lot of races like that this year. Coach is trying to find some opportunities to get her challenged, and he's, he's trying to find some people in the area who can run with her and actually push her and, and push her to her limits because she's a rare talent. Yeah, yeah, there, aren't, there aren't that and, many people. And a wonderful person. That's, I mean. Phenomenal. Yeah. Just, Rarely do, just, do the two match up as perfectly as they do with her, but yes, truly one of the great people. Um, not just at USCB, but in the world. In the world, <laughs> right. <yes. laughs> in the world. Right, if you just want to make yourself feel small, go stand next to yeah, Betsy Douglas absolutely. for five minutes. But she'll make you feel good. That's right. She'll make you feel good about yourself. Yeah. Um, so she raced great. Uh, rest of, of the team, a uh, little bit of a work in progress, but the women's team is, is coming along nicely. Um, you've got uh, Jamie Thomas, of course, who's been around for four years now. She's doing good things. Hannah Johnson's coming along. Scotty House is being nursed along. And they have a couple people who have just uh, joined the program who haven't been cleared yet. Uh, so once they come along, Coach feels pretty good about that women's team. Uh, the men lost a lot from last year. It's a rebuilding year for sure. Um, Nick O'Neill with a, a solid start, finished ninth and was, uh, was the Sun Conference Runner of the Week along with Betsy. Um, but after that, it's it's a lot of guys who are out there giving it their all, but yeah. they're they're not really uh, cross country runners per se or distance runners. Some of them are, are sprinters or middle distance guys from the track team trying to stay in shape. Uh, a couple other guys just came out and said they Went they'd give run. it a shot, like yeah. Akira Durst. And yeah. um, there's definitely some. A character some work to be those done. other guys who just kind of constantly around and raising his hand and wanting to be involved and participating. We He's a good like, dude. Like He's that. a good dude and yeah. a good sense of humor too. Uh -huh. We enjoy him a lot. So we can uh, just get him some sleeves on his shirt. Ever. Yeah. You know. No, I don't. I don't think. I think his arms reject them. Yeah. <laughs> Yours would too if they looked like that. Yeah, it's more like my belts. <laughs> right. So yes, cross country will be off this weekend. They'll be back at it on, I believe it's September 17th at the Winthrop Adidas Invitational up in Rock Hill. That's uh, an ever-changing schedule, it yeah, seems if you saw, like. If you look at the schedule today, it said Florida something. Florida yeah, that one's off. That's off the schedule. That one's off week. the radar now, yeah. so uh, going to Winthrop next and uh, hopefully have a little bit more of a full squad and, and a little bit better overall performance. And of course, we know what Betsy will do. She'll, she'll kill it, as always. Um, so those are the only two that have been in action so far, but that's about to change yeah. because uh, the men's and women's golf teams are getting started uh, this weekend. They'll be traveling and then playing on Monday and Tuesday, I believe, at uh, Sea Island, uh, the Coastal Georgia Fall Invitational. The men are at Sea Island, the women are at Jekyll Island, and uh, that's going to be exciting. Two top 25 teams. Uh, people are sleeping on the men because they, they lost so much with Brad Curran, Judd Milam gone. Uh, in fact, lost uh, four out of five starters. So, so a lot to, to reload there, but uh, Danny Allen's excited about the guys he's brought in. Uh, the freshmen look good. He's got a few transfers as well. And then the women, number six in the country and, and always a powerhouse, and they bring back four out of five starters. And uh, actually, one of those will not be in the lineup for the opening tournament. Two freshmen cracked the lineup. So that tells you how good this team is going to be. You're dumbfounded. I, I am dumbfounded. Flabbergasted yeah, that's even. That's exciting though. Um, yeah, some great competition within the ranks there. And, uh, yeah. yeah, Crystal Sunderman in inherited herself a heck of a team and I think she's going to make them even better. Yeah, I'm really I'm looking forward to seeing the, the highlights and results from that because I'm probably not going to make it to any rounds. Oh, you're not, uh, gonna, you're not going to jolt down to Jekyll Island probably, and, probably and catch that one? And then, of course, the, uh, the spring teams are getting after it. Track and or fields out there working every day. Uh, baseball is, is getting after it. They haven't been on the field yet, but they've been doing their, their competitions and their conditioning, pushing trucks and uh, tug of warring and what have you. And then softball has been uh, Softball's been out on the field the last three nights. I'm hearing yeah. really good stuff, um, from especially from uh, the, the players who are still around from last year but aren't playing this year. Um, uh, like Whitley student Martin, assistant Whitley Haley Martin. Brown, um, uh, uh, Missy, Missy Hughes. Hughes. Um, these are some of my favorite people of all time, anyhow. But they're saying really good things. Um, a very small shout out to a freshman, uh, Caitlin O'Hearn, who um, has, has really making a name for herself in the practice field in those first few days. Uh, good to hear. Yeah, really I saw Abby Pack uh, throwing a bullpen today out behind the out behind the uh, rec center, and she looked as good as ever. So. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm already excited for spring baseball and softball. Yeah, uh, ready to get over to Savannah and see some track and field. And it's going to be uh, a great year all can't, year round. Can't come fast enough. No, it can't. And, uh, and what else can't come fast enough is the season premiere of Catching Up with Carlo. Because we've been, we've been teasing it for a couple of weeks. And uh, our buddy Carlo finally shook off the, the cold from, from the Great White North, from Toronto. Uh, shot some footage. And um, we're going to talk with him in just a second. Uh, Carlo's going to come on and tell us about what he's got in store this season and his first installment of Catching Up with Carlo. That's coming up next on Sand Shark Bites. At the University of South Carolina Beaufort, we offer small classes, individual attention, and an affordable education in an atmosphere that fosters diversity and achievement. We are students. We field nine Sand Shark sports teams that compete in the Sun Conference. We are athletes. We are one university with two campuses serving the coastal areas of South Carolina and Georgia. We are the low country. We are the fastest growing four-year school in the University of South Carolina system. We are USCB. All right, it's finally time for the much anticipated season debut of Catching Up with Carlo. And I'm catching up with Carlo right now, Carlo Peruza. Uh, my student assistant started out with me last year, had an idea for a great segment, and uh, I was a little apprehensive about, about letting him take over in front of the camera, but uh, Carlo, you sold it to me. You know, tell the people kind of what your vision for Catching Up With Carlo was. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty much the vision for Catching Up With Carlo was just to get to know the student athletes more based on their personality, because before I started doing these, I mean, on this show, we talk about them, their performances, like on the field and stuff like that, but we really didn't get to know them. So I thought it was a good way to get everybody to know our student athletes. And it's been very well received, of course. It's, it's always uh, funny, it's always entertaining, and, uh, and you've got some great stuff lined up for the, for the season already. I know you're working uh, to get with the men's golf team, have them show you some trick shots, uh, got some different things coming up the pike. What are we gonna find out about our student athletes this semester? All right, so this semester, yeah, like you said, um, the golf, we're going to eventually do one on trick shots. That should be pretty fun. But uh, actually, a couple days ago, we just did one with the girls' soccer team, and uh, we talked about coaching. Obviously, uh, Coach Ed, he's one of the biggest personalities here. And, uh, yeah, we talked about his freakouts, and there's some very interesting <laughs> stuff in there. Yeah, the fans don't always see it because it's on, on the opposite side of the field, but uh, Coach can be pretty entertaining oh, yeah. during a game, whether he's uh, – Getting, getting upset with his team or getting upset with the officials or what have you. So, yeah, Carlo uh, went and caught up with the women's soccer team this week and uh, got a little bit more insight from their perspective on their coaching staff. So uh, let's take a look. Without further ado, it's the season premiere of Catching Up with Carlo. What is your favorite thing about your coaches? My favorite thing about our coaches is they feed us and they give us gear and they sometimes are nice to us. <laughs> they try to meet our needs the best that they can. They got us a lot of cool like uh, rehabilitation equipment this year, which is a big change from last. Uh, my favorite thing would be that we actually got loads of gear playing soccer. Like it's, <laughs> we are like the best dressed team on campus, pretty much. We have shoes, we have the whole lot, really. The favorite thing about Coach Ed is definitely the food after games, Chick-fil-A, cookout, sometimes pizza if we're on the road, just anything that's nice. And my favorite thing about Mike is first thing in the morning when we don't want to smile, you can guarantee he'll be there saying jogging at 5.30 in the morning. What is the funniest story you have to, with your coaches? There's some pretty funny moments we have, but probably every time Ed falls. <laughs> and Ed then, falls. Yeah, all the time in practice. The coach Ed slipping over constantly at practice. The coach guarantees we'll slip over at practice, especially when it's been wet, which is always really funny. I get pushed, yeah. Your teammates did not tell me that. They told me you just tripped. No, they, they pushed me. So I can just remember this one time, I think we were playing a scrimmage and he was desperate for us to score. He was playing in goal and it was wet outside. <laughs> and he ran up to kick the ball long up the field. just smiling but that was just one of those standout moments for me that I'll never forget. One time we were in California and we we're in LA traffic so we've been in traffic for probably like hour and a half at this point and we're finally like going down the freeway and like we're going like 70 miles per hour and then all of a sudden we hit traffic and literally like 
Everyone slams on brakes. The whole bus is flying forward. Everyone's freaking out. The girls are screaming. Coach is having a panic attack. Do you have a favorite Coach Ed moment that you could share on camera? That we could share on camera, absolutely. Um, there is one about a uh, time in a cabin in North Carolina, but we can't really mention that uh, on film. Uh, but one of my favorite Coach Ed moments would, would probably be the time that he got a yellow card without doing anything. He actually agreed with the referee and the referee came over and carded him. He said he was being sarcastic. I don't know, probably was, but. Can you please talk about Coach Ed's freakouts? His freakouts, okay, yeah. Ed will be sitting there, something will happen, either we get scored on or somebody makes some mistakes. He'll, his shoulders will rise, he'll, he'll have his water bottle in his hand, he'll stand up and throw his water bottle down, and then he'll walk away towards our bench, look at the bench, and then take a breath, and then walk back to his chair, and sometimes he'll pick up his water bottle, but it'll be like a really like quick pickup. He kind of just like holds it all in, and then it all comes out all at once. Um, one of the things that he likes to freak out about is bees, if there's any bees in the area, because he's allergic to the stings. So it was only last week we were on the bus to an away game, and there was a wasp on the bus, and he was not happy about the wasp being on the bus. So he's driving along, like, looking behind him. <laughs> Coach is guaranteed to freak out pretty much every game, and like Poppy said, it's not mostly at the bench as well, which is pretty funny. Uh, it usually starts with a high-pitched whine, um, followed by a roar, uh, somewhere deep in there, um, and general uh, girly moments of sheer terror. A good freakout happens when you know the same player or a couple players keep making the same mistake over and over again, mm -hmm. or it's something so simple that we just talked about at halftime right. or before the game, and they go out and you know do right. something exact opposite of what we talked about. That makes for a good freakout. Right. Um, the referees always make for good free yes. yes. Me and the refs, we, I love them. Yeah. It's not a mutual thing, I don't think. I think they, they don't think I like them, but I really do. I, I enjoy the refs. They're great people, and uh, I, I just want to make sure that they're doing their job well. The only other time I've seen this really from, from Coach Ed uh, is when he found out that his wife was pregnant. <laughs> Can you show me your best Coach Ed freakout impression? I need a water bottle. Throw everything off and so off. And scream at the bench and all the benches fall when people on the field aren't doing it right, apparently. Why would you do that? Why? Why would you do that to the bench? But obviously the bench didn't do it, so everyone just sits there and looks. Sitting, and then he stands up, walks over. Walks back to his <laughs> chair and sits back down. What? That was one moment. I met Heberling, the head soccer coach at USCB, and I approved this message. Ah, uh, catching up with Carlos. It's it. good to have him back. <laughs> he, he taps into uh, a side of, of USCB athletics that most of us uh, wouldn't want to access even if we could. Right. <laughs> No, it's always a good time when, when Carlo catches up with the teams, and you can look forward to many more behind-the-scenes uh, looks, I guess, so to speak, uh, taking the, the offbeat look at USCB Athletics throughout the semester. So thanks to Carlo for that. And, uh, and just one more thing to do, Mr. Duffy, Mr. Dancing Man. We've got to select the uh, Sandshark Bites Student Athlete of the Week. And, um, hmm, who could it be? Could it be Betsy? <laughs> does, she, does she have any more room in, in anything to put one if, more piece of paper? If into we it? actually like, gave awards, she would not have any room left. Yeah. But uh, we don't actually give out an yeah. award for this. It's just a bragging rights thing. So Betsy Douglas, USCB Women's Cross Country, is once again for the for the countless <laughs> time uh, the Sandshark Bites Student Athlete of the Week. Uh, again, Betsy ran 1902 in her season opening race at the Palmetto Cross Country Festival and certainly could have been much faster if there was anyone in her hip pocket, but nobody pushed her. Uh, apparently she was uh, 20 yards ahead five seconds into the race and, and just bolted away from everybody and, and uh, nobody ever challenged her. She had a two and a half minute win 
Uh, many more to come, but she'll see some good competition up at Winthrop, see some Division I teams, and then uh, the week after that we'll go to, the, to Charlotte for the, uh, the pre-national meet, basically national preview meet on the course where they'll run, uh, run the national championships, and hopefully uh, a few months from now she'll be an All-American once again, and we'll talk about her more then. So congratulations to Betsy. Uh, keep doing what you do. Keep being who you are because uh, you're as good as it gets. And that's going to do it for us for another week of Sand Shark Bites. We'll be back same time next week. Catch us then. Until then, keep those fins up.